It's Friday the 28th and Team Red has just announced the RX 9070 officially, or at least I hope, because we're filming this on Tuesday. But if you think we're behind, you're wrong. Hey, Phil, we're gonna eloquently segue into live news later, right? Yeah. But for now, we've got some spicy news. Missing rocks, more AI frames, dual GPU builds, leaked benchmarks, and a competitor to the 4080 from, from Team Red? All this and more on Meet PC's new, dang it, Phil. Sorry. Meta PC's news, let's, let's just get into it. It looks like the RX 9070 has been leaked in terms of benchmarks. And it looks like the XT variant is 42% faster on average than the 7900 GRE at 4K. Phil, can you believe this? Let's take a look. Like they told you earlier this week, AMD was planning a press briefing this week for the media. The guys at videocards.net weren't invited. Oh. Now this is compared to the 7900 GRE. We made a video here on the channel where we did some benchmarks of the 7900 GRE and got beat up in the comments. 38% on ultra settings at 1440p on an average of 30 plus games. My goodness. That's a nice boost. That's a huge boost. I mean, ultra and max on all of these tests and it's showing anywhere from, you know, 20, depending on the, on the settings and resolution and ultra settings, all the way up to 40% when you're talking about 1440p, which is a huge boost over the GRE. And there's a couple comparisons in here of the 6900 XT. My goodness, 51% boost. Zach, so I'm not really completely, you know, fully aware of everything in Team Red. Mm -hmm. The 7900 GRE, what would be, that be in Team Green terms? Probably something like a 4070. Okay, so we're part. seeing like 38% faster than a 4070 and an average of 30 plus games at 1440p? Ish, yeah, Ish. for okay. sure, yeah. Wow. Which is a huge boost, it's crazy. Now availability, we've talked about availability on cards, it's a nightmare yeah. right now. Now. So the real test is how many of these 9070 XTs exist in the wild and can people get today? Time will tell. Let me know what you guys are seeing around the internet because as of the time of this uh, recording or, or release rather, the card is out now. You've got all of your favorites. My goodness, The Witcher, you've got Black Ops 6, you've got Starfield, <laughs> Assassin's Creed, Cyberpunk, and it's showing crazy performance when compared to the GRE. I'm seeing about a 20% difference on the 9070 versus the XT. So that gives us a little bit of information on the 9070 as sure. well. Sure, and I think the XT, that's really the card that people are focused on with this release. Oh, for sure. My goodness, Cyberpunk, kill it. What's F124? F124. Oh. F1, <laughs> F1 racing. Oh, oh, racing. I'm not a big racing guy. I like the ones where you shoot things. So as of the release date of this video, the new 9070 cards have been announced and you know, we recorded this on Tuesday, so I don't exactly have all of the details on the, that's fine, that's fine. We're gonna talk about it. This morning, Advanced Micro Devices announced the AMD Cinematic Universe and this could be the best launch from AMD we've seen yet. Specs for the RX 9070 and XT are available now on AMD's website, and the leaked 9070 versus 7900 GRE comparisons Zach just presented were spot on. The 9070 XT is beautifully priced at an MSRP of 599, and the specs are actually impressive. This 16 gigabyte VRAM card has a 2.97 gigahertz boost clock, 64 compute units, 128 AI accelerators, and over 1500 tops. During the announcement, AMD VP David McAfee said that they were laser focused in every product decision to offer the best performance per dollar, which we're seeing with the 9070 XT for sure. However, the 9070 doesn't exactly meet up to its big brother's accomplishment. The 9070 has eight less compute units, is 400 tops below the XT, and the boost clock is 500 megahertz slower. There's a pretty significant divide between the two cards. However, the 9070 is priced only $50 cheaper. We saw this before with the 7900 XT and XTX release, and AMD did lower the price once they realized they couldn't push those units. So the real question is, is AMD going to learn from the last release and maybe drop the MSRP on the 9070 before launch? Well, probably not, but hey, we can hope. We saw lots of software side announcements like FSR4 updates, Hyper RX technology for lowering latency, hardware enhancements for encoding, not only with H.264, H.265, but also AV1 codecs for streaming. While they might still be behind Team Green in this area, they have made huge advancements in ray tracing. Rumors have long been that these cards have been in warehouses for months, and we did see a leaked BIOS with a date of December 13th, 
so we're hopeful and cautiously confident that we won't have issues with supply as we rapidly approach the March 6th release of these cards. And with all that lead time, plus the BIOS having very similar structure to the previous generation, we might be seeing the best driver-supported release from AMD so far, which will be a nice change of pace for Team Red enthusiasts given previous releases. But enough about AMD for now. I hear Zach complaining about a blackout, so let's see what he has to say. Uh-oh. What? Black screen? Where? Apparently on some NVIDIA cards. NVIDIA is responding to these complaints about black screens. This has been something that's been reported from users on 30 series cards, experiencing black screen issues all the way up to, I think even 50 series as well, 40 and 50. So this is a, this is a widespread issue, it seems like. Well, it's that's like an iPhone. Yeah. When the new iPhone comes out, what happens to your old one? Oh, it's starting to get worse. <laughs> so, but it does seem like this is a, this is a, maybe a driver issue. If you look at NVIDIA's forums, there are countless reports about black screen issues, new threads, or even under the last Game Ready driver release. The problem is not only affecting 50 series cards, but also 40 and 30 series cards, users of which are usually advised not to install the latest drivers. For RTX 50 series owners, there are no older drivers available, so what are you gonna do? Honestly, it's starting to feel like having an NVIDIA card is playing Dark Souls. Yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a side quest in and of itself, isn't it? <laughs> After reading the comments on the forums, it seems that there are many solutions, but they don't seem to work for every user. And I'm guessing that's because there's so many different card generations that are being affected by this. And thing. it might be a culmination of multiple problems, not just one. For if sure. there was one simple thing, it could be easily narrowed, narrowed down. The good news is that NVIDIA has now confirmed that they're investigating these reports. However, it's unclear if it's a software issue that can be easily resolved by drivers, as it was not mentioned in the last graphics driver changelog. So there are layers to this, my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Emmanuel at NVIDIA said, we're actively investigating the issue. I don't know if it'll come with a driver update or a vBIOS update. Curious how many people are actually experiencing this issue. Obviously, there's reports on the forums. Have you guys seen this on your NVIDIA cards? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to get a sample size. If you did, also let us know. Are you using Windows 11 or Windows 10? That's a great question. Because yeah. it very much could be the one factor that could be the same, could be something with the OS could be. and not NVIDIA. NVIDIA's having, they're having a rough, rough Q1, huh? We're getting missing ROPs. Yeah. Now I saw this, I think it was Gamers Nexus and it was first reported, I believe, was it on, was it, it was on a forum. Yesterday, NVIDIA announced that two cards may be affected by a production anomaly, which causes lower ROP specs in the final configuration. NVIDIA claimed that this can result in up to a 4% lower performance, but we've already seen cards reaching even lower performance. All the way down to 10%. Which is huge. For the amount you're paying, you should get every percent, half of a percent, tenth of a percent of the performance that you're paying for. Since this came out, we obviously look at every system that comes through our QC line to make sure this isn't an issue before it even ships. The important detail is that NVIDIA has announced two models, the 5090 and 5070 Ti, said to be affected. Only 0.5% of the cards is coming from NVIDIA, presumably out of those already made. This is what they're saying was affected. However, based on new information from Redditor Gingeraf90. What a great name. That's a fantastic name. The RTX 5080 may have a similar problem. At least that's what the software GPUZ shows. The same software that brought the problem to light in the first report by Tech Power Up. This card, the screenshot here, shows 104 ROPs instead of 112. That's eight less. Yes, we're doing math. So the RTX 5090D, which is the China variant, 168 instead of 176, which is an oddly interesting eight missing ROPs. There's a theme going on here. The 5080, 104 instead of 112. 5070 Ti, 88 instead of 96. They're all eight. They're all eight. What's going on? As we can see, the Redditor who posted the screenshot is using the latest version of GPU-Z, uh, and he actually went back and actually made sure that it was updated to make sure that these numbers were correct and validated. What is going on, NVIDIA? Great question to ask. You know who's not missing ROPs? Who's not missing ROPs? Meet PC, uh, Meta PCs. <laughs> Meta PCs, guys, it's time for an ad. Listen, custom builds, pre-builds, featuring the new 50 series cards, and we check them for missing ROPs so you don't have to. Maybe you've already got a 50 series card. Yeah. Imagine that. We happen to have the Pathfinder. These are custom built systems that are pre-wired for 50 series cards, just waiting for you to slot that bad boy in, 
plug her in. And you're ready to go. Plug and play Meta PC. A, pu a, a plug and play? Where'd this dog come from? <laughs> Guys, the Meta PC's Hyper Beast mouse mats are available now at Amazon. We've got white, we've got black, we've got the full color version. All you gotta do is go to Amazon.com, type in Meta PC's Hyper Beast, or click the link in the old description. That's the worst shirt I've ever seen in my entire life. To make it go away, go to MetaPCs.com. Hey, you know, I was wondering, do you think they're gonna have any issues of props being missing on the 5070 and the 5060? Oh boy, there's only one way to find out if you can actually buy one. <laughs> The RTX 5070 and 5060 mass production delay rumors. Don't say it ain't so. It ain't so. The media is reporting that Nvidia encountered a performance issue in its mid-range GPUs, forcing a delay. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think maybe it's a, a lack of ROPs? It could be a ROP issue. Uh, NVIDIA has already confirmed that the GeForce RTX 5070 non-TI has been delayed until March 5th. Boy, that is just around the corner. The company originally planned to launch the TI and the 5070 in February, but the latter SKU was delayed for undisclosed reasons, which may confirm there will be low stock at the- Gosh. Again! I can't do this anymore. You can't keep getting away with it! I'm really sorry for all the depressing news. Listen, guys, can we get some more happy news? Yeah, actually, um, I know you love AI. Oh. AMD is updating Fluid Motion Frames! This is a hard day for me. AMD developed Fluid Motion Frames as a driver-level solution for frame generation. Yay! This technology is part of the AMD software HyperRX stack designed to boost gaming performance using upscaling and frame generation. Gamers can choose to enable each technology per game. That's cool. Now the advantage of AFMF is that it does not require game developers to integrate the technology. That's pretty cool. The downside is that it upscales and interlaces full frames, including menus and UI, which can reduce quality. Like 1080i, like from like 2005. Yeah. Yeah. Are we gonna get 4, 4KI? <laughs> yeah, probably, who knows? <laughs> Particularly useful for older titles. I love that. You know what, I love when a company says, we're gonna make sure that we do something that lets you play your old games and make them better. Cause that's part of the, the, the fun of getting a new card is going through your library and be like, hey, you know what? I never got good frames in Batman Arkham Asylum. What am I gonna get now? So great on AMD. It's nice that AMD is looking out for those Bat fans. Yeah, you gotta look out for the Bat fans. You know who's not? Who's not? Nvidia. What? Check out this Reddit article. That oh, I, found for. I love Reddit. This guy bought a 3050. Whenever you bring up the 3050, people get angry. And I, and I get it. It's a card that probably shouldn't really exist. Let's read this title. I bought a 3050 to pair with my 5090. Stop. That's a weird thing to say. It's a very weird thing to say. Weird thing to say. But why? To uncripple PhysX performance in older 32-bit titles. Here's the results. Let's check it out. These are banger games, by the way. Oh, Mafia 2 classic. Benchmark without the 3050 and max settings. 28.8 FPS. That's not good. Boo. You got a 5090. What are we talking about here? Now, when you add in that 3050 and run it on max settings, 157 FPS. Oh my God. You brought up Batman. Batman Arkham Asylum. Another banger of a game. Benchmark without the 3050 and max settings, 61 FPS, but with many of the scenes in the low 30s and 40s. That's unplayable. Unplayable. Benchmark with the 3050 in and max settings, 390 FPS. So all of these games seeing an incredible boost by adding that 3050 as a dedicated PhysX card. Here's my question. How would you use a card as a dedicated PhysX card if there was only a screen that we could show? Oh. In NVIDIA control panel, there's surround and physics settings and you can dedicate a card to PhysX. And I'm guessing this is a holdover from that and it's completely seamless. Oh. If I could only put on a tin foil hat. Omar put a tin foil hat on him. Is there a way, if, is it on? Oh wow, yep, that's really cool. If I'm Jensen, I made them buy the flagship model card and then to play their old games, they had to buy a 30, my God, I've done it again. That's diabolical, but it's also genius. Game respect game. Listen, Jensen, uh, the jacket just keeps getting more extreme and it's probably gonna be on the backs of selling 3050s. <laughs> Some leaked specs huh? and some leaked benchmarks. The 9950 X3D and the 9900 X3D. Now, now I'm very excited for this. 
these processors, we are going to be benchmarking ourselves. Yes, we are. Um, but it seems like a PC builder uh, decided to get ahead of it. Bulgarian system integrator PC build apparently couldn't wait for the embargo. So they pulled some strings, they got the CPUs, and uh, they also published the QR codes and serial codes on those CPUs. <laughs> I they think dox themselves. they dox themselves. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to be getting advanced CPUs anytime soon. We thank them for their sacrifice because we have these few tests, including 3D Mark CPU profile, where you can find 1248 and 16 core configurations. We're looking at a increase in cores by three as you jump from the 9800 to the 9900, and by five if you go to the 9950. And the scores are insane. Absolutely insane when compared to even the former gaming goat, the 9800X3D. I you mean, know what's a great thing too? This 9900X3D has, has four more cores, 300 more megahertz per core, and a larger 3D V cache, and the TDP is the same. It's still only 120 watts. These are the processors to get. They are gonna go like crazy. Keep an eye, metapcs.com. I know we're looking at uh, maybe like mid-March type thing for the release. Yep. Is that, is that kind of where it's on March 12th, 12th. Okay. That's what the grapevine says. These CPUs, I sure hope there's a lot of availability because I want one. Maybe that'll pair nicely. Maybe I'll get a RX 9070. You'll XT. go full team red. Yeah, why not? Guys, I'm hearing more and more Nvidia, former NVIDIA loyalists. I think the Intel loyalists have already somewhat given up, but it's on the GPU side now. Are we finally to the point where we're like, okay, I've, I've had enough. I'm gonna try Team Red, maybe. Let me know what you guys think in the comments if you're, if you're considering making a switch for the former NVIDIA fanboys. Thank you so much for watching. It's been Meta PCs News, and listen, I have a very disturbing thing that I need to share. This is crazy. We were reviewing the stats on last week's news video and notice so many of you haven't hit that little subscribe button. What's going on with that? Why not? Why won't they do it? I don't know. I'm, I'm asking nicely. If you enjoy these videos and you want to see more, make sure that you're subscribed to the like button, comment, and that's it. We'll see you next week. Bye. I got stuff to do. Bye.